and welcome to another educational video about screen printing and of course heat transfers by Catspit Productions. Today I figured I would share something with you that is kind of fun. It's an easy way to add something to your product line and I thought that we would take a look at it. I haven't done this in a long time. I had to borrow this little heat press unit from my brother and uh, I got some heat press patches. If you recall we did a video a little while ago that I did some big bigger patches and I heat pressed them using the uh, clamshell press onto a hoodie. Okay so this is a very similar process. These are little heat press um, patches okay and they have a lot of adhesive on the back of them and you can use a simple little heat press a cap press like this one to press baseball caps and other types of caps. Anything that is kind of round, has a round surface, you can fit on this little cap press. So take a look at the cap press so you can get a feel for that. You'll need a special heat press that is specifically made to heat press hats. So this heat press can do baseball caps or bucket hats, any type of curved hat that can fit on the little curved pallet and be pressed against the curved heating element which will conform to the shape of the hat surface which is curved of course because it's a headwear item. So many different styles of hats can be done on this little cap press but it's specifically designated for hats only. Now I don't do a lot of heat pressing in my shop for my customers. I do mostly direct screen printing and you know the heat pressing stuff is more novelty stuff for myself or for friends and stuff. I have here several black baseball caps. They are six panel. I believe they're brushed cotton twill type six panel baseball caps. They're relatively inexpensive so this is a good product to add to your line. Um, and expand it and these are kind of cool to keep you know these are the kind of hats that you can sell out of your car and stuff because everybody loves baseball caps you know so putting a heat press patch on a hat like this these shown here is a very easy way to add another product to your line and it's just uh, pretty cool so we're going to press some of these hats if you're interested in purchasing a cap heat press, I actually sell very inexpensive imported ones. You can find them on the Catspit Productions website under the Equipment Sales tab in the navigation pane. Okay, so uh, first of all here we have the heat press is set to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to use you know, a decent amount of pressure. Now I apologize that my table for this is kind of floppy so it's going to wiggle a little bit. But when you do this yourself, you probably want to find a really sturdy table because it'll make things easier in production. Since I'm just doing a video today, I don't mind if my table's a little wobbly. Uh, just hope that it doesn't affect your viewing pleasure. Okay, so first thing you got to do is you got your hats. You got to make sure that, you know, they're linted and clean. And you're going to take out this piece of cardboard inside here. Most hats have a little piece of cardboard. And you're going to place the hat on the heat press and you'll see this thing down here. A lot of heat presses have this wire thing right here. And that holds the back of the hat down. It kind of pulls this over the pallet. Okay, and you want to try to bring the bill out to the edge of the pallet and then stuff the back of the hat under the hat catch thing. Okay, now some some hat presses will actually have a piece of Teflon that's wired in to this top thing and it, it stays uh, suspended above here. So when you come down with it, 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 it goes over the cap automatically. It's pretty cool. But this one is pretty basic. And now I'm just going to test. I just want to make sure that, that the hat is able to be pressed and under the curved shape and just make sure I'm not getting any wrinkles or anything. So I'm just going to press it here for a minute and look and see what's going on. And I don't know, I guess we're going to try it. I think we're going to try it. I can't really tell. I haven't pressed hats in a little while. So let's try this one here. We're going to do about 30 seconds. So I'll place this the best I can. And that's another thing. You might actually, I think as I recall, we can heat this up a little bit. And the if it gets hot enough, we can almost make this little thing stay put sort of speak. It gets slightly tacky. 
but it has to get a little hot for that. All right, so let's let's try it. Oh, that's some wicked pressure. <laughs> okay. So the table's going to bounce around a little bit when I open it in about 20 seconds. Okay, so let's check it out. <laughs> that's really, there's a lot of pressure, but for, for patches, it's really good to have high pressure because it really pushes the adhesive. There's a good amount of adhesive on the back of these little suckers. So by using excessive pressure, it really pushes it into the product and gives you that embroidered kind of look. You know, it's harder to tell, you know, if that it's a heat press hat when you get it in there. And you probably, probably want to let it cool before you start bending it like I just did. Because the edges, you want to make sure the edges are well sealed. It's always the edges that want to peel up first. All right, so let's, let's let this one cool down a little bit and we'll press a couple more here. All right, so take the paper backing out. We're going to put it up on here, get it under the catch in the bottom, pull it down so the bill is not in the way of the, the heating element. Let's get our timer ready. Let's do this one. We'll give it a little bit of a press just to see if we can get the patch to stick slightly. It, it, I think it has to be pretty hot because this is there's some heavy adhesive on there. You see that? That's a lot. So you might want to, if you have issues with the patch moving, you know, while you put it here and then you press it, then you might have to tack it. You can actually, you know what it is? I think uh, a tacking iron. There's an old tacking iron that they used with photo mount paper that you can touch the back of the adhesive and then stick it, I believe, is, is one method. All right, but mine are staying pretty put. I'll, I'm just winging it, so let's, let's try this one. Okay, and we're all set again, so we're going to pop this up and bounce the table around. <laughs> okay. So that one actually, I can see that one actually did move a little bit on me when I pressed it. And I can see that it needs more. The little horns on the edge, they're hot. You know what it is? That one there, I might need to let actually cool. I'm trying to push it back a little straight. It got a little cockeyed, it's not bad. But um, yeah, I can definitely see that little pieces of the patch, you probably, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> little pieces of the patch, you probably wanna keep on here and let it cool a little bit. Cause I pulled that off and as I bent it, these little horns on this design kind of started to come up a little bit. So I guess cooling, you want it to cool a little bit before you start messing with it, you know. Um, that's not bad. Look, it got it got tiny, a tiny little bit of crooked on the top, but it's not bad. All right, so let's try another one. Yeah, I think the, the little tacking iron probably would be handy. I should buy one of those because that would be good. It's a little, um, they used it for dry mount photo paper or, or uh, dry mount tissue and stuff. And it's a little handheld thing and you plug it in and it gets hot. The end of it has a little... Uh, iron on it like a little triangle shaped mini iron and you can just touch the back and then tack this down because it can move. The first one I did was fine. It didn't move at all but the second one moved just slightly so you know let me see if I can tack my <laughs> because you really don't you don't want it to move if you're gonna spend some time placing it you don't want it to move when you press it you know, so you got you, you may have to get a tacking iron to do this really nicely and efficiently. I'm really winging it here. So, you know. All right, let's try it. <laughs> okay, we're going to start it. And obviously the time for these things is not critical. Uh, you know, the more heat it gets and the more pressure it gets, the probably the better it is. All right, and that one's done. So we'll let it, I think it's probably a good idea to let it cool just a little bit before you pull it up, because if you bend the hat around the edges, it'll start to, you know, because it's still hot. The glue is still pliable and hot, so it starts to want to peel up, especially if you have little detailed parts hanging off like that other one you saw. Dagnabbit, sorry about that. <laughs> little ringer. Uh, oftentimes, the, the little zip timer, 
it doesn't work. Like this one, oh now it's working. Um, before it was stopping, so I just used the digital one. But as these little heat presses get old, when you have these little egg timer things, sometimes they, they just stop working. So you have to get a little timer like this. All right, so I let that cool down. I think that's good like that. That one came out nice, nice positioning, pretty cool. Probably could have put it a little lower, but you know, I'm gonna give away some of these hats, so that's cool. All right, so I'll press a few more and then uh, we'll look at them and uh, wrap it up. That's a pretty cool way to add a novelty product to your offerings, to your customers. The patches are available online, they're novelty patches, so you can do a Google search for novelty heat press patches, and you should be able to find many retailers that will sell all kinds of different novelty patches. And it is, I think, the most challenging part of pressing the hats with the patches is placement. So the tacking iron, like I mentioned, would probably be a good idea. You can get them at your local arts and crafts supply store. You should be able to get a tacking iron. I believe that's what it's called. It's used for dry mounts and stuff like that in crafts, you know, scrapbooking and stuff like that it's often used for. So you should be able to find one. And if you're interested in buying a heat press, please remember that Cat's Pit Productions does sell heat presses. We sell uh, clamshell heat presses, flatbed heat presses. We sell the cap press, like you saw in today's video. And we also sell mug presses. All right, so if you're interested in them, they're very inexpensive. They're imported, but I've been selling them for about five years now, and I've never had a problem with them at all. So it's a good little product, very inexpensive, and adding a heat press to your shop, especially a clamshell, is you know, a great way to add uh, versatility to your abilities and more, more abilities to your abilities. <laughs> okay, so pretty cool stuff. If you're interested in buying a heat press, I'd be happy to uh, offer you a price quote, which includes shipping, so contact me through YouTube or through the website. The heat presses are listed on my website under the equipment sales page, and you just hit the Recoma tab, because they're uh, Recoma heat presses, all right? And I sell them very inexpensively there, so pretty cool stuff, all right? Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. And remember, if you like what you see, please comment below, rate thumbs up, and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.